know I stand between you and lunch, so this is my ploy not to uh, to beseech you not to have me for lunch. Yeah. So feel free to, to remain standing or, or you know whatever, walk around or sit down if you wish. Uh, quite a difficult see the normal uh, thing is to sit right. Uh, I'm a very compliant Singaporean, so when they gave me this topic, actually they gave me this topic of chicken rice, chai tau kway and all that. So I said, are you, are you telling us the menu for lunch? And I hope there will be lunch. How come you started the countdown clock when I'm doing icebreakers, right? You should not. So, um, thank you so much for, for allowing me here to, to share uh, this stage with you. I'm learning a lot and I'm really looking forward to the seminar sessions breakout. Uh, one hallmark of learning is questions. I have far more questions than I have uh, solutions. And I really want to thank uh, the speakers here. Uh, I would just want to quickly summarize my own takeaway before I, I go into my own presentation. Professor Gulich, of course, uh, shared, set the stage right at the beginning. If you're talking about identifying somebody very young, and then expect them to win some medal sometime down the road, maybe 10, 20 years later, you'll be very sad, right? Because your definition of success must be podium finish. So the first takeaway is how you define sporting success is very important. If you follow the world and say, unless it is a podium finish at the Olympics or World Championships, then you are going to be very, very dismayed. You set yourself up for failure. So, but nonetheless, the, the, the data is very compelling that there is a non-linear pathway shared by all the other speakers. If you need to start them young, you will expect them to, to go, go up, not a linear pathway, but come down. Importantly, what do you do when they come down? Do you deselect them? Do you not, no longer give them any more support? You know, and, and that's it. Um, the next speaker, Dr. Pion, the very systematic, very specific test right, to refine looking at potential rather than the actual uh, talent per se. If I did those tests, I'll be deselected straight away. Dr. Tai, I think very powerful. There's a will, there's a pathway. So, but as we evolve a pathway, do we allow the pathway to actually develop? You know, we are doing this new, there's many, many positives about Singapore. I'll come around to that very shortly. And he positions very powerfully, if you were to do this thing, develop this ecosystem, he plays in terms of important coach, environment, then athlete. Very important, right? Coach, environment, then athlete. The question I would ask, this is one of the questions, is what would be our Singapore model? Do we get the ecosystem correct? Do we get the coaches? Uh, how do we get these coaches? Because when you say world-class coaches, they will come from a different culture or context. So how do we evolve a coaching philosophy that is very specific and perhaps would be successful for Singapore? We have done it uh, many, many times in other areas. I think we can do it for sport as well. Uh, Dr. Juanita, privileged to share with her, being part of the IOC, we shared the same uh, Luzanne oxygen, right? Uh, very powerful, holistic development, many, many important things. We are developing the child and we're not developing just the object or the commodity for metals. Huh? And not age specific, the age, uh, the F10 model, that also very powerful. So if we were to have a model like that, how would we operationalize and work like that? And Sebastian's about uh, PE teachers. I started out as a PE teacher. So as, as Director Wen Hao said, you know, some of us are thinkers and doers, and some are both. So I try to do sport, and occasionally I try to think. <laughs> but I started out, uh, my heart is in physical education, so I'm very glad that in the ecosystem, uh, we have the PE teacher, it could be also be a parent. So what do we do to enculturate that they play an uh, important role in this system? Some countries will reward right, and acknowledge uh, the, the, the person who first spotted uh, the potential to perform. Okay, so that's it, and I hope somebody will summarize what I say also. Perhaps when I ask these questions, you can help me answer them at the seminar session. Um, as I said, this, this was uh, 
a, a, a very big step in, in the right direction. I mean, by no means, there are many experts in the world. I don't claim to be an expert, maybe because I ask a lot of questions. It's very holistic and we, you know, the, the team was a, a, a very balanced team, which included an Olympic athlete as well. So spanning nutritionists, physiologists, psychologists, uh, right through as well. And I have no doubt this uh, consensus statement as a good guy uh, will continue to be refined and developed as research and practice continues to evolve as well. So what I need for you now actually is to start asking some of these questions to say what would this mean for Singapore? When we talk about best practice, is best practice somewhere else? We have yet to develop what we will consider as a better or a suitable or appropriate practice for Singapore. Uh, there, there is a flavor here, the NYSI flavor, although it is so new, only nine months old. Uh, Chiyong, uh, Dr. Lo Chiyong and soon-to-be Dr. Harish uh, Supaya was part of this. We also contributed an article. Uh, and our value proposition in the context learning from Harish's work is that we are all sleep deprived. Our young people are all sleep deprived. So if we are talking about sports science, the top 1% and all that, and you can't get your basic right, we probably sleep two hours less than our European counterparts, adolescents. And adolescents in sleep, they have their own circadian rhythms. They have a disposition of sleeping much later, exacerbated by you know, the most connected gadgets and all that that we have, that is quality time for young people. So if you don't get enough sleep, and then you have to do training, and you have to do academics, what gives, right? So those are questions as well. I, I want to come back to what uh, Wenhao said very early in, in, in the journey from playground mud to metal. At least it rhymes, right? No, not, it doesn't really rhyme. <laughs> he asked the question, talent, timing, tenacity. He asked a very pertinent question, is talent a curse, a bane or boon, right? When we talk about talent, do we recognize what is talent? The psychologist will tell you, if you tell somebody very young, the positive psychology and say you are very talented. You don't need to do anything, but you're always the fastest, you're always the most intelligent and so on. So the person actually has no motivation. It's a natural disposition. I don't do anything. And what happens when the person needs to work a bit harder, but doesn't work hard and then fails? And, you know, the psychology is that, oh dear, you know, I'm not going to try new things. There are experiments that say, if you tell somebody you're talented when you have the success versus somebody who says uh, you get good results in sports or otherwise because you tried very hard and applied yourself. You know, the long-term effects, the studies are showing that the people who try hard and work very hard and build up uh, tenacity are the ones that succeed. Great very uh, uh, common in sport. Nobody success, uh, succeeds in sport without grit because you have to cope with many different stakeholders, you have to cope with growing up, uh, you have to cope with training, academics and so on and so forth. In Singapore, you will see that we have other constraints. So the question is how do we work within these constraints to evolve our own man, uh, model? Timing. Of course, timing when you have to start young at an ecosystem or age 12 or, or even younger, 10, in primary school, not necessarily a bad thing because in Singapore, we intervene to provide the opportunities. Why do I say that? If the, the best practices in the world and the results are showing you, you sample at least two, three sports uh, in their youth before you specialize. Now, if you looked at your playground, now is exam time, soon to be holiday time. If you went to any of our nice playgrounds in the HDB flats, oh, what did I do? I'm so sorry, help. You, you, you probably have to bind me and say, don't walk. Huh? Uh, if you went to the playground, I, I went on many, many occasions, and the playgrounds are always crowded, but not with Singaporeans, with foreigners who appreciate the nice weather that we have. So not enough play. So we almost have to identify people to do sport, and JSA program, the Junior Sports Academies, they are using a multi Expo, uh, sport exposure thing. That's a good start. You've got to get, before they can be efficient movers, they have to move first, right? And most of us are too sedentary. You know, where, where are our folks when the rest of the, the youngsters are playing? Uh, maybe holidays with their parents, very sedentary, or 
uh, more enrichment classes that are non-activity based. Is this a catastrophic error? <laughs> tenacity. All right, tenacity. As I mentioned, you know, we need to overcome a lot of setbacks and develop tenacity. So the question I have to ask is that we, we want to intervene before there's any hardship. There's a saying, right? We had coffee today, take out or kopi kao, means strong tea or coffee. Um, there's a saying that uh, the longer the tea stays in the hot water, the stronger is the tea. So are we intervening too early to prevent these setbacks that they don't actually pick themselves up? These are questions I, I would like to put to you. So from playground, mud to metal. Thank you, Adila. Sorry. The earlier you start, right, it's, it's like an investment of limited resources. There's a higher risk. But you can lower the risk by widening your definitions of success. Um, in childhood, boys and girls develop different tempo. When they come to adolescence, even worse, right? Uh, male, female, worse. So if you try to identify talent there, do you recognize talent? In other words, do you pick out the fastest, the strongest person? Or do you find out the story behind the other person? I mean, the, 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 the performance of the person. Um, are you able to recognize somebody who's, who never gives up? Maybe may come in third, fourth, fifth, but never gives up and has never been exposed to the sport. Or do you pick somebody because the person is naturally uh, more advanced Right, therefore, and has a lot of exposure hours of training, and therefore you're picking the most obvious. So there's uh, greater risk, uh, moderate risk. And as we heard from our speakers, the closer you are to the actual, so it's more talent detection than development. Within a two to five year period, we talk about talent optimization, then perhaps you get a better measure of success. So how do we groom champions at the highest levels? These are very compelling uh, examples, but interestingly, they are not in the main system. They are in the ecosystem provided by the parents. They have good parental support. Not untypical, many successes, golfers in Korea, tennis players in, in, in uh, Russia have a lot of parental uh, support. Um, they are also on some of the, they are benefiting from some of the support given by uh, Singapore in some of the scholarships and so on uh, but what is typical in their stories you've read the narratives and all that they have what we call divine dissatisfaction in other words they don't like to come in second ordinarily if you play cards they want to win if Joseph Schooling were here right he, he, he won't want to be second but if he starts work he might be called Joseph working right but never mind. They are, they, they are individual stories. Their individual stories are very typical that they want to do their best. There was a write up about Ping Siu just, uh, I think, yesterday, where she said, when, you know, she wasn't sure whether she wanted to, to continue or not. And she was half baked with that. And then she didn't do so well. But once she set her mind to it. So, this singular focus. Um, many athletes have many things, they, they are not obsessed with just sport alone. I don't have any confessions about uh, unfulfilled dreams. Uh, I, I took part in a lot of sports, but I was very happy to finish out at a school college level, right? But I also had many interests. I also would like to cook. You know, about 15, 16 years, I wanted to be a chef. And look what I became, just a professor. So they are not untypical. They have many different things. So who guides them to rationalize some of these things? Do we allow some of these things to naturally uh, evolve and so on. Okay, I'm going to move a bit faster because time is ticking on. So what will it take to uh, achieve sport success? I would say broaden firstly, broaden uh, the, the definition of success. It shouldn't just be podium finish. We should use sport as a vehicle of youth development. Um, is there sufficient time to make up if you, if you want performance? So you identify this person and said, you know, you seem uh, quite gifted and interested in the sport I like, I can do. You know, what, what needs to get into place? Is there enough time? 
and you want to do this from a holistic uh, perspective, is the person. So you need to have these conversations continually. So that close dialogue is important. People change their minds, you know, as, as we evolve. If we adults do that and we are supposed to know what we want, what about somebody at 12 or 13 years old, right? So you need to provide uh, support, you need to have conversations, you need dialogue with them. And it's okay for them to be uncertain, right? So we shouldn't be imposing uh, our own wishes or the nation's wishes on some of these people, uh, youngsters. There's always this, the element of luck. You know, we can do our best, um, but at the last moment, something happens that affects the person psychologically and so on, and therefore doesn't perform. Does the person fail? Not necessarily. So while we acknowledge this, then we know how much, if the kind of system that we uh, put in place. So the time span, 10, 20 years, is a very, very long time to be able to make up your mind. If we look at academics, nobody needs to promote academics in the context of Singapore. It's self-driven, right? Uh, we, we call what we call uh, sampling because in primary, secondary school, we learn many different subjects and sit for examinations, right? It's the sampling before you actually decide what you really want or what, what uh, topic you are interested or what discipline you are interested in. So it's the same with sport, right? You've got to provide the opportunity and, and hopefully that happens. A lot of positive things are already happening and I'm glad to see that. Okay, so why is it so problematic? Just very quickly, zooming through because it's been uh, said already, I'll put through all these points and then just talk through. Okay. Long time frame already, many things can happen. Puberty, we all know, uneven. So don't put too much weight into that. You can give them the exposure. Uh, psychological aspects these days, but psychological aspects are context-based as well. So a lot of psychologists will say, yeah, you can assess personality and all that. You, you could have a very uh, divine dissatisfaction with academics, doesn't mean that it's the case for sports and vice versa and so on. So there's always a context-based portion. Um, allow for a lot of uh, ups and downs. So when the athlete is down, all stakeholders, you know, including the media, we have to be very careful, right? We build up dreams and something happens in, in their youth's folly. You know, everyone goes on them. They did not ask for these things, right? All they wanted to do is an earnest uh, journey right through. So we need all stakeholders to work together. Uh, more and more, Dr. Dion was talking about in, in his country, the very specific uh, tests to detect. But we know there's conflicting evidence otherwise, uh, also to say unless these tests are very specific to the sport and predict maybe the CGS, the grams, cent uh, sorry, centimeters, grams, second type sports, then they are both uh, valid and reliable. So I asked the question again, the quest from playground to podium, is it like the movie, mission possible or impossible when we try to look for some treasures that uh, till today cannot be found? Huh? So from somebody who is interested in competing, can the person get there um, and fulfill his or her dreams? It's easy to jump on the bandwagon. I suppose this, this is what I'm trying to say. Um, be, be mindful of false evidence appearing real. Now, what, what does that mean? You know, we say, okay, here are some of the best practices in the world, but I put it to you, the importance of cu culture, country, and context. Very different, right? So we can take some of the principles there and adjust and adapt it and keep on questioning. We also need to do this. Science sometimes is its worst enemy. Absence of evidence is often taken as absence or evidence of absence. It cannot be so. Not everything can be answered by science or evidence based. I put it to you, a champion is very untypical. It is in search of the outlier. And what we're trying to do when we put systems in place, we have to be careful. We're trying to normalize the outliers. Even if you can create the same conditions Right? In a different time and space, your results might be different. All, all we talk about are probabilities. There's a saying, if yesterday is history and tomorrow is the future and yet not yet here, what you have in between is now. So what you do now and how long does now last is very important. The point I wanted to make is that past and present success does not guarantee future success.
but we must continue to work with all stakeholders, including the athlete, to get through this. Uh, the point I want to make here is that um, all these countries in the last Leo Olympic have some form of youth talent ID and development. And I like the point that Dr. Dion made that among these countries, there are three that have a population size less than Singapore. Can you guess what they are? Anybody help me out? Croatia, Jamaica, and New Zealand, right? So Jamaica, 2.7 million, Croatia, 4.2, New Zealand, 4.4. So size, as uh, Dr. Dion said, you know, small size means very good. You can test almost everybody. But I'm coming to the next slide, see how we can. Uh, so I'll take you through the talking points. Just let me get through this. So why talent ID? Because the intention is we want to identify uh, this young child. We ask, who is this child now? You know, and what tools we need to develop. So there's a mad rush to develop all sorts of skills that we think might be holistic and predictive of sports performance. And then there are questions of validity, reliability, predictability, and so on. Um, importantly, we want to ask, what kind of lifestyle do we offer to this person? The person can stay with the parents, as, as some of our successful athletes have done. That's the ecosystem, their own support, brothers, sisters, extended family. And school, they also go to school. But in, in those uh, Joseph Schooling's case, the school is not Singapore. The school is in America, right? And there are adjustment issues. We talk about uh, resilience and so on and so forth. Where to send this one? Normal school or sports school? I think both. It's neither here nor there. It's different things for different people. Different strokes for different folks. So not necessary that everyone has to go through a fixed pathway to get there. We, in, in Singapore, we talk about multi, multiple pathways to success, right? So we must really mean what we say and afford this uh, for sport development as well. Timing, when exactly do you specialize, how much volume to increase, the data seems to show after adolescence. Uh, Dr. Gulich, Professor Gulich studies are showing also in his lit review that 19 years old, 20 years old, only do they actually step up a lot of the, the specialization and the volume as well. So know-how, this is very important too. Do we have the right expertise, the right philosophy? Who are the people we put to the athlete that forms this ecosystem? That's us, right? Teachers, parents, coaches, policy makers, administrators, that's all of us. And what should we be focusing on? Should we be focusing on the athlete or creating this ecosystem that that provides the best opportunities for as many people as possible. So we do talent ID as a broad frame because we need to allocate uh, limited resources. So we must balance efficiency and effectiveness, right? Doesn't mean that there will, no, there will not be any dropouts. Of course, they, they will. Huh? So in the Singapore setting, interestingly, if we're talking about the numbers, we have slightly more than half a million uh, youth in schools, that's what we want to try to uh, do. In the in the uh, in the talent ID uh, selection trials every year, I was told you know three to four thousand. You know perhaps next time even a bit more, and then we generate and funnel resources to hopefully we have fifty five people competing at the world stage. So we invest now, and we need to accept some inefficiencies and risks. Is my point. long uh, time frame. Now, why is it so difficult? I will zoom through also because it's been uh, covered extensively, but I just want to draw the point that there are differences across sport that look at different attributes. So if you're looking for a general ability test uh, very early on, uh, then th there might be issues there. And of course, as also alluded to by all the speakers, there are all these moving parts, unpredictability, the interactions that we cannot quantify, and we can't even say how large each jigsaw piece is. And sometimes within the differences and variability within groups uh, is actually less than those that are across. That means if you look at all the swimmers, the variability there could even be greater than between uh, swimmers versus some other sport. Um, easy to oversimplify, is it nature or nurture? It's a combination of both because I put it to you. If we're all born similar, 
God forbid, uh, no variety. Uh, then it comes to the environment and all the factors and w what we put into practice. And if, if we can harmonize and make training identical and the environment identical, which we cannot do, uh, then it is genetic disposition, but it is never the two. This interesting slide, DNA or determination, if you look at determination, a closer look is that I didn't know that marathon running induces diarrhea. It is 100% nature, 100% nurture. So giftedness, which is quite different from talent depending on who you read, and this divine dissatisfaction of always wanting to improve myself, never mind the positioning, can be a very potent mix uh, for success. How do we orchestrate some of these things? Is it something that is inborn? Or some might even say that resilience has a genetic disposition when we previously taught it to be a, a nurture factor. Quite, quite interesting. So what we want to try to do is we want to try, uh, what, what is the risk of doing talent ID very young? You identify the wrong talent. You believe you know, these series of tests will help you and therefore you do not uh, identify the right talent. You picked up what's obvious and you forget the others. Huh? And then if you identify them, talent identification or detection is useless without development. So what is the development experience you want them to go through? You want them, you want to provide a support. So the excluded talent, of course, does not get any support. So what, what can we do? We can try to harmonize, easier said than done, right? Easier said than done because we have multiple stakeholders with their own KPIs. So we all need to work together. Increase porosity, that means what we're talking about, talent optimization. You don't want to, you know, from a coach's perspective, they may say, I brought this, you know, uh, student provided very good guidance and, and uh, counseling and so on, only to hand it over to somebody else who takes the credit and so on. So we need to, to navigate some of these things. Um, as, as you have heard, some of the better ways or, or more cost effective ways is later detection. So we have many uh, great. Uh, Signals, if you like, in the last couple of years since the Youth Olympic Games, right now we got Active SG, who is doing a lot more. You know, people were coming on late, maybe not, not active in sport at all at a very young age, but there are opportunities there for them to, to develop further. Interestingly, I, I used the figures about half a million uh, children in school, right, school going age. At this point in time, we also have half a million Singaporeans who are aged above 65. So why, why can't, you know, if you're talking about active aging, why can't we target some other uh, sport apart from Olympics and World Championships? There are also the master sports, isn't it? And so on and so forth. So, yes, oh, time's up, okay. <laughs> Just give me a few more moments. I think you can read it for yourself. As I said, I have more questions than I have answers. So what we want to say uh, is to, okay, we can develop better tests, but that's not the, the solution. We use these sources of, uh, sources of information uh, rather than for selection or deselection. We want to have a human judgment there, exercise wisdom and discernment with caution. Uh, we want them to, the Singapore model is that now we are choosing people to do sport, so we want them, the early exposure is important. Uh, so that they, 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 because sports require a certain physicality and so on, but we should be focusing on the well-being of the athlete. That's the most important. We want competition experience and training to be wholesome uh, and, and age appropriate. So you, you don't push too hard and they drop out prematurely, they get injured and, and, and drop out of sport. Um, the PE teachers are very good at that. Sebastian showed an example there. We did that as a PE teacher as well. But after that particular uh, event, we will ask them, can you be creative and try to burst the balloons with your body parts? And they do that and there's a lot of fun there as well. So those are just examples. So what about practice, the volume of practice and so on? It's been dispelled already. There should be sufficient, but not too much. Uh, we talked about training load happening, stepping up only after adolescence or some closer to young adulthood. I mentioned about the JSA program, the multi-sport approach. 
one model does not, or one size does not fit every feet, or one model or one size of shoe. So that's important to note. I say again, the important point here is point number two, anchor sport as youth development. The other point is to broaden definition of success. If we make it wider, we can, can we not also have a definition of success that this person through the wholesome engagement in training and uh, being in a sports school or some other ecosystem became a better Singaporean or a better uh, person for sport, uh, for the sport ecosystem. So some thoughts there. So success does not mean just podium finish. It can also mean, and this is what the Singapore Sports School is attempting to do, and they have uh, quite great measures of success already to be a champion for sport. I mentioned about sleep. I want to come into this uniquely Singapore challenge and don't say anymore. Sport versus academics, national service, country before self. We can have interesting discussions about that but I sense a great openness. Uh, university games is a black hole. M many other countries, this is a transition from school, and then JC, all right, A-levels, uh, A and then they disappear after that. So my key message, I'm so glad you all are speed readers. <laughs> I just want to say, it's so complex. Everything is so complex and we try to systematize. So we have to be nimble, we have to be flexible, we have to be able to say cope with this messiness. We talked about the VOCA world, right? So VOCA world sport is even more VOCA than you can ever get. VOCA, not VOCA. I, I really should end here. Some game changes. Uh, we, we have uh, very powerful software, big data and so on. We can data mine. Um, not just be strictly uh, taken and seduced by the uh, data itself, but have some discernment over it. And this is my final slide. Uh, different folks, strokes for different folks. So thank you.